Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at more rocks. I don't know why we keep doing this, but it's rocks. But uh, this is kind of uh, related to the previous tiling textures in ZBrush video that we did. But this time we're going to be looking at it with uh, geometry instead of only having a plane to sculpt on. So this can be used for if you're doing rocks like we will be doing or you're doing a like a floor that's made of like planks, wooden planks or something, or just anything that you want to tile across a plane that's actual geometry. The cool thing about this is that you can also take this geometry, not just export it as maps, but export it as actual geometry for, you know, your game engine or if you want to do something cool with it. So to get started, I'm just using this uh, polymesh. And because we're using, we're doing like a brick sort of pattern, I'm just gonna initialize this and make it into a Q cube. So with the Q cube, we just have that. I just that I just need a cube basically. So the Q cube is nice because it doesn't have all the weird stuff that the polymesh cube has. Yeah, that's essentially a sphere and a cube shape. Yeah. which is just super wacky. So it's not going to be a um, like a rock sculpting tutorial per se. So we just want something that resembles a, a rock shape. So you know, don't expect the the most amazing rocks from this. I think people will expect the most amazing rocks from this now. <laughs> so, I don't know, usually when uh, I do this kind of rock stuff, I just uh, use the Trim Dynamic brush, because it just gives you nice surfaces. Trim Dynamic is so nice to sculpt in rocks. Yeah. I also really like using H Polish, mm. just really just... Yeah. Uh, trim Dynamic is for like kind of designing it, and then H Polish is for refining it, which makes stuff just... the, the, the corners just sharper. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, like I said, it's not going to be uh, the most amazing rock in the world, but it's just to give you a brief overview of what this looks like. Yeah, try to see the potential <laughs> of this. Try to see the framework for this, how you can use this for different things. Essentially, we're now just building geometry, which is like tileable geometry, which yeah. you can do whatever you want with, such as uh, turning into a displacement map, which you can tile, or you can bake it down as a normal map, or like Morton said, you could straight up use the geometry by itself. Yeah, so now we're just using the H polish, just to get some more final shapes in there. There we go. That's a perfect rock right there. Beautiful, <laughs> and, uh, beautiful. I just recommend just going down the sides a little bit. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to do all sides. You could do all six sides of this one rock, and that would make your job pretty easy because then you can just sort of rotate this one rock. But for you know, for our purposes, this is going to work just fine. And. Uh, then, oh, okay, it's already prepped. <laughs> and I'm just gonna tile, maybe this is good. Oh God, it's actually like the worst. Yeah, that's actually really bad. It's actually the worst. Okay, we, I don't have any actual real alphas that uh, would be good for rocks. So we, we'll, we'll just make do with what we have and make something we pretend looks like a rock texture. Yeah, use your imagination. <laughs> it's a, yeah, imagine a tiger came across these uh, cobblestones or something. <laughs> And then just scratch them. And he hates cobblestones. He really hates them. Okay, so something like that. So that's going to be our perfect rock or brick. The next thing we're going to need is a plane, just the regular plane 3D. Now, I don't know if this is going to work if uh, you have your own kind of geometry. It's very Seabrush scale dependent, so just be aware of that. And it looks like we sculpted it on the wrong side. Just hold down shift and then it sort of snaps to an angle. You can see that it says snaps to 90 degrees. So we want this to be facing up towards the camera. And this is where we're gonna sort of grab our our information from. So it's, it's, it's really pretty simple. Once you have one rock or two rocks or however many rocks you wanna use, then you just need to populate this plane. And we can just get started by setting something there like that. Let's say that's our starting point and scaling it up a little bit. So we wanted to place as many rocks. Now, the way you do the tiling effect is pretty simple, is whenever you place something that's on a border, so you can place whatever you want inside and you don't have to do anything extra, but whenever anything touches the border of this plane, you're gonna have to go to deformation, duplicate, shift control and D, and then you offset it. So we offset it by two times 100, because the units here is, the center of this plane is 100 by 100, so we need to offset it twice to get it to, to match up here. And th this is essentially what you do all the way around. For, in order to be able to preview this a little bit better, it's probably good to, uh, at some point, 
to set your document to the resolution that you want to capture this at. So we're just going to do a 1K map and then just resize that. Yep. Control in to clear the canvas, drag it out, edit mode again, and then just let's zoom out here a little bit. And if you just press F, this is just gonna align perfectly to the to the edges of the plane. So using F to frame your plane, that's where you want you know all the action to take place. If you selected anything else, so if you press F again, this the tiling is obviously not gonna work because now uh, Seabird is just gonna grab whatever is outside the plane as well. And also make sure your perspective is off as well. Mm, Otherwise important. that's not gonna work at all. And, and we then, also recommend that you watch our last video on this because we, we covered the same principles, just a bit more in depth yeah. with sculpting instead of moving stuff around. So let's uh, do something like that there. <laughs> this is great. So, oh, actually one thing I really wanna just touch on here. So right now all these are sort of on the same level here. You can you can vary the level by just scaling it regularly and then that's gonna affect your uh, the map that you output. If you don't want that to happen, you can hold down Control and Alt and then just drag on one axis and then you can see it stays level here in the in the y axis but the x and the z axis they they sort of get modified a little bit so that's a way you can sort of play around with this and and, and make some more interesting rocks i suppose and if you're you're doing this for any kind of production not just for a 10 minute youtube video then i recommend that you sculpt like a proper rock like you, you know you spend some time <laughs> like and you, and you want to sculpt from one angle but you sculpt one master rock because then you can rotate it around and you can scale it and you don't have to really sculpt any of the other ones. Yeah. If you, you know, if you flip and flop a, a rock, you have a whole different, different asset. And there again, you see the, the rock or the brick there touches the top of the plane. So we want to offset it, but we can't offset it in X. So we're going to have to offset it in Y. And again, we just do this twice. Set up a hotkey for this, maybe if you wanted to, probably make it easier. Yeah, put it in your UI or something. Yeah, especially if you do rocks a lot or like tileable planes or something like that, then that might be might be useful to you. So from here on, it's basically just exactly the same thing, just, you know, 20 times or however ever many rocks you decide to do. One thing that I, I want to touch on is um, just to make it easier for the tiling. If you place something in the corner, like here, so this touches two corners. You're gonna have to, to tile this on every single corner, otherwise you're gonna end up with a gap in your in your texture. So if we have it here, this rock here, we duplicate that, shift control D again, and then we offset it twice there. Then we can offset that one in the Y axis up there, and then we can offset that also in the Y axis. And now that's gonna tile perfectly. So do you have anything interesting to say about rocks? Yeah, rock I actually textures? do. When it comes to um, when it comes to like if you start a new project, I really recommend that you, you spend some time on doing these kind of maps, these kind of assets, because then you can speed up your work so much later on. Yeah. If you if you have to do a bunch of rocks and you're sculpting them all by hand, like <laughs> you, you need to be lazy, you need to cheat as much as you can, because now yeah. instead of uh, you know sculpting like crazy, you can you can straight up just apply a map to it, a tileable map. And also regarding how much you tile it, if like you could make like four rocks here and that would tile, that could tile perfectly. But just because something is seamless doesn't mean that you can tile it like a million times. You're still gonna see a, see a pattern. Yeah. So let's say you have four rocks and you tile it a hundred times. Yeah, there is no seam, but you're gonna see a pattern like right away. But if you have, um, but if you tile something like this four, five, six times, you're not gonna be able to see a pattern. So there's a big difference between it being technically seamless and it being usable for production. Yeah, that's very true. It also helps if you start to create some variation in there as well. It really does. Um, right now, again, I mean, we're I'm just using the same same rock over and over again. Probably not the best. But, no. <laughs> you know, it definitely works for this example. So. Yeah, if, if I were to do a map like this, let's say I had to I had to do a whole city. I, the immediate thing I'm thinking of is like a Witcher 2. I had to do a lot of, if you had to do a lot of cobblestones for like one of the cities mm. there or yeah. Skyrim, whatever it might be. Uh, you know, I would really spend a lot of time on 
on doing these kind of assets, you know, sculpt maybe 10 different bricks and then start tiling across. That's going to make your life so much easier. Yeah. And especially if you sculpt this on all sides, then you, your life is super easy. You can just flip this around, you yeah. know, and then that, that mixes it up a little bit. So highly recommend that. And then you can also make a few different one of these maps where, you know, you can blend between them. Maybe one is for a more a finer area of the city and one is for a rougher area of the city. And now you can, you know, blend between them. Yeah. Man, there's gonna be some great rocks. Oh, this is gonna be beautiful. So like, like, like I said before, I would recommend that you start off like this where everything is on the same level. Uh, so make sure that you restrict your, your scaling to only two axes. Uh, because then afterwards you can always go in and experiment and see if you want oh maybe maybe i i wanted something to because this way everything's going to be perfect and be on the same plane but once you start and think about you want some variation in there then that's a way you can can vary it a little bit more yeah it's easier to make something perfect imperfect than it is to make something imperfect perfect yeah trying to make something which is just a huge mess into a nice level is is really hard so this is obviously a great stretched rock right there. <laughs> um, but if you just make a few of these that have this kind of thing, and then obviously don't stretch it uh, just like this, but stretch it and then put on your alpha or uh, sculpt on it afterwards just to fix it, that's going to start to look really nice uh, for whatever you're doing. We have some really nice alphas on our uh, Flip Normals Marketplace for uh, for rocks made by XMD. Mm. There's a bunch of stuff you can, instead of the kind of shitty one Morton was using here, which ships with ZBrush, what? you know, they're, <laughs> what? <laughs> they're, actually, they're actually really solid alphas, which were made for exactly this purpose. And that's also probably a good idea just to try and vary the spacing between these rocks a little bit. So it's not all the same. So you can have like a little offset there or something just so everything doesn't look super perfect. So let's say this was something like this and there's there's some holes in this and stuff, that's fine. And then, then what we can do is, I'm just gonna be worrying about the inside stuff here, but then, you know, you can go in and just vary the, the height of these just a tiny bit. Uh, you want some to stick out, some to go in a little further, but be, be mindful once you're at this stage and you start editing any of the border bricks, you're gonna have to, you know, that change has to be reflected on the other side as well. So when that is all said and done, we can just frame in on this one plane here. The city F key. Again, just checking that the corners are fine. No symmetry. No symmetry. Oh, sorry, no, no perspective. <laughs> maybe also no symmetry. Also maybe no symmetry. <laughs> <laughs> Defeats the point of tiling, I suppose. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then we can just go to alpha or alpha and grab duck. And then here we have some beautifully grabbed uh, bricks. What you could do to uh, sort of adjust the intensity of this inside of ZBrush is your plane. So it, like it stops grabbing once it hits this plane. So you can take this and just move the plane up a little bit. Let's say we want it to cap there instead. So frame in again and let's grab it. And now you can see now we get a lot more variation in here. So let's just try and export this out into Photoshop and then you can see what it looks like. There we go. And then... Nicely placed on the desktop. Yeah, where everything else belongs. So we have this and now that's looking pretty nice, but it, like, it can be a, a bit hard to see some of the pattern. Obviously, if you sculpt it more, that's gonna be a lot easier for you to see. So in here now, I'm just gonna do what I did last time and have done here as well. <laughs> it's the stupid way of uh, of checking your tiling. Hmm. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this into my document here. There we go. Ta-da! There we go. Tiles perfectly. So you are gonna notice some of these things. There's some artifacts that happen with um, like the depth map inside of ZBrush. This is purely because there's an overhang here that goes all the way out and there's nothing for ZBrush to sort of make this gradient with. So you're gonna have to go in and fix these small parts um, in your geometry if you wanna use this kind of 
uh, sea depth map from from ZBrush basically. But I think it's a small price to pay for for getting something that's tileable and procedural like this. Yeah, it absolutely is. And then you can always use the levels like this and just adjust it so we can see how super cool our texture now looks. Now we get a little more of the pattern in there. And then you know you're basically ready to throw this into substance or even uh, even just use this directly, just in a game engine or something. So yeah, I'm really sorry for actually not changing the material. <laughs> I, I didn't even realize. It was just I was so focused on doing the, bricks. the red wax is the worst thing in the world. But you but know, you have to use it when doing bricks. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it doesn't compute if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that just about covers it for, for mm. this. Um, yeah, like I said, you can use it for all kinds of things. If it's bricks, if it's, I don't know, some kind of weird carpet or uh, planks, whatever. This method works with, with pretty much everything. So. And we also have, uh, like we said, we have a part one to this as well, where we show how to actually sculpt this kind of stuff. Yeah. So if you want to if you want to make something like wrinkles and you want to make that those tileables, we, we have one part. And of course, we'll link to that in the description. There's probably ways to combine that, actually. Probably, probably yeah. do like a plane and then geometry on top. That, that reminds cool. me, you, if you guys have any cool tips, you know, we'd love to hear hear that as well. Yeah, definitely. So if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to like, comment and subscribe and turn on notifications so you get notified every time we put up a new video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.